Hello and welcome to this webinar, OEM Opportunities. Um, I'm Andy Brown and I'm the editor of International Construction Magazine. Um, and whenever we do um, webinars at KHL, um, we've done quite a few this year already, um, we always say what a fantastic panel we have. Um, and of course we always do. Uh, but today I have to say that we have an even more fantastic panel than normal. Um, every year, International Construction compiles our yellow table, which is a listing of the world's top 50 OEMs by sales. And in the most recent ranking, published in the May issue, uh, both Metsu and Lugong were in the top 20, and we have the two men in charge of those companies, um, so we really are very lucky. Um, I will introduce everybody um, in a second. I'm just having a look. I'm just seeing all the numbers um, come up from the attendees, which is great. Um, thank you to everyone who has registered. Uh, we've had over 500 registrations for this from all over the world. So it really is a global um, event. So thank you all very much. We anticipate that this webinar will last for approximately 45 minutes. And before we begin, I'd just like to thank our sponsors, uh, Nylacast, Topcon and Terex Trucks. Um, our speakers. Um, so first of all, we have uh, Chairman Zeng, who is the, um, the chairman of the Lugong Group. Um, thank you very much for your time and for joining us. Hello. Hello, thank you. Um, and we also have uh, Pekka Bamora, who is the president and the CEO of uh, Metso um, Autotech. Um, Pekka, thank you for your time. Okay, thanks. So thanks, good afternoon. Um, I'd just like to remind everybody before we start um, that you can ask um, our panel questions by using the Q&A function, which you should be able to see there. Um, I will be keeping an eye out for them. Um, so please do get your questions in and I'll get to as many as I possibly can. Um, I feel that really uh, my hands are a little bit tied and we have to start with COVID-19. Um, now, hopefully we're on the other side of the worst of the pandemic. Although, of course, conditions vary from country to country. Um, Pekka, kind of quite a broad question, but I just wonder if you could maybe assess the impact of it on the construction industry so far? Um, yeah, of course, uh, construction industry, in the beginning of the COVID, <clears throat> we, we saw very dramatic sort of slowdown of, of things, uh, things, and it was uh, almost like a panic reaction uh, in, in many places. And uh, <clears throat> it affected for a short period of time um, us at least, and I, I believe also other uh, OEMs um, orders, uh, we didn't see orders for a month or two to nearly nothing at all, but then recovery started, uh, started and sometime in, in um, towards um, October we started to be on pre-COVID levels already uh, when booking orders and, and ever since uh, the market has, has grown ways above pre-COVID levels. So very good rebound from 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 those days uh, so this is this is what we see in, in sort of oem side and equipment equipment side um, then of course uh, many countries continued uh, with the with the uh, with the construction activities it was seen as an important uh, important part of the of the economy and uh, and especially supporting the people and and, and everyone's ec economy and uh, and people just needed to and the governments took took a position in many places that hey and people need, <coughs> uh, do need their paychecks and uh, and they but they need to bring home home to to make sure that life can continue as as normal as, as possible. Okay, great. And um, Chairman Zeng, I wonder if you could give us your kind of take on some of the kind of the challenges that kind of COVID uh, posed for Lugong. Yeah, last year we had. Uh, a lot of challenges. The first of all, how we take the actions to protect our employees and the, the, uh, the health and the, the safety for the family, everything like that. So we, we did a great job for actually for that. We are, are all the employees and their family were safe. And also outside China, our employees and the, and the, the family also is very safe. So we bought a lot of, you know, the, the uh, masks and some other, you know, the medicine, everything 
for their family, for the employees, so they can take care of themselves and their family. Even we have uh, the four, you know, communities, we, we take a lot of action to protect the four uh, communities because most of our employees stay in that four areas. So this is uh, it's very safe. Another one because the China, the governments, they take a very strictly uh, control and also lots of uh, actions to recover the economy. So the last year for Liu Gong, we, I think that the, the whole industry in China is, is very good. The, 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 the industry uh, grows about 14%. And for Liu Gong, we had a very good uh, performance. We grows about 20% for the sales uh, revenue. So this is very good for, for us. And for the carbon set, because we take a lot of, uh, you know, the stimulus for, uh, for encourage the, 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 the business, especially for the manufacturers. So the governments, we call the, the new infrastructures. Mm -hmm. That means we invest for the 5G facilities and new energy, new transportation and the urbanization and some other uh, economy activities. So the industry is, is, uh, is what's very good for, 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 for China market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so we've kind of we've touched on it a little bit, but um, kind of Pekka then, if, if we kind of, you know, construction is um, considering everything that's happened, you know, kind of being quite robust um, in kind of 2020 and the start of 2021, <coughs> kind of I wonder whether you could give us um, a view on kind of how you think things might go in the near future for the industry and maybe you know are you guys expecting good growth for you um as a company and for the industry in general yeah yes yeah, certainly i mean things are looking looking um, fairly positive at this moment even though covid is still with us with us and uh, and affecting many many parts and areas of our lives uh, uh, lives but um, uh, we've seen a very strong rebound uh, from 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 last year last year and, and then of course uh, Chairman Cheng already mentioned uh, that the stimulus package uh, in, in China that has been in place already uh, since about a year ago I would say uh, in, in China uh, and now the same similar sim stimulus packages are being discussed in, in Europe and, uh, and in North America and um, they are not yet available but eventually they will be available and a lot of optimism in the industry and uh, and clearly uh, many of our clients are are, are preparing uh, to to be in in, in competitive and, and productive uh, shape when these stimuluses are, are finally available okay great and then if i could go to you please um chairman zhang um we kind of pecker there kind of touched on kind of china um i mean obviously lugong are a, a global company and we'll kind of get to We'll get to that later on but with china performing so strongly in kind of 2020 with kind of sales up kind of so high it'd be interesting to kind of get your kind of take on you know the the chinese market in particular and kind of where you think that might go in the next few years so the china market if we look the uh at the, the early of this year the chinese commons released the next five years the uh, strategy and the prime for, for the country. And in general, I, I believe the China market will be quite stable. And the, some, some signals will be growing. If you look at the, 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 the China's economy, we are still have a lot of to do. For example, we have, uh, the governments have uh, lots of investments for the countryside, for the uh, urbanization, and also for the new infrastructures to support the, the the economy uh, growing and improve the efficiency of the country. So I believe for the next five years, the, the market for China should be quite stable, but some of the products may be declined for, for one or two years, and some of the new uh, products we are growing, just like, uh, for example, the ARP, the assist equipment for, for, for Chinese market is growing very fast. But some of the products, for example, the, the ex readers and the last year and the, the first half year uh, to, uh, this year, is those is huge uh, populations. So it's it could be 
slowing down, even declining for, for, for 10 or 20 percent for that. So I believe China is still will be a very good market for, for, for the for our industry. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and I'd just like to, um, so we, we have a, a question from, um, from our audience, um, from, um, so thank you very much, um, Matthias Hess, um, who asks um, whether this will be a, a short fire, so whether this will be um, due to supports by governments due to COVID, um, but he asks what happens after the support and government investment is over? I wonder, Peck, if you'd like to take that first? Yeah, uh, it is, of course, uh, there, there can be various scenarios what will happen, happen, and, and of course, really the pessimistic one is that this will be a short shot, and, and that's, that's about it. But, uh, but on the other hand, if we look at what else is happening, happening in the world, uh, world uh, the drive for sustainability overall in, in, in the societies, it, it means so many things. We, we need to rethink how we do things. We, we need to obviously electrify things. Uh, we need to rebuild uh, a lot of our industrial infrastructure in order to, in order to, to be, uh, um, be more sustainable, in order to, 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 to reach out to, to, to these commitments that, uh, that many countries and governments have given. We as a company, we have committed to limiting the global warming to 1.5 degrees. And, and we, are, we are very serious and we believe in we, we believe in that it's something that everyone needs to needs to do and uh, and at the same time we see that as a business opportunity at the at the same time as as well so so I believe that it's uh, it's not a, a, a sort of a just one short uh, period that we go through but many of these stimuluses will be really used at least the European one for for so-called green transition and uh, and it's only the beginning of a, of a journey that we all need to, need, to, need to take and go through towards the carbon neutrality. Okay. And just while we're on the, the subject of stimuluses, um, if I can ask you, please, um, Chairman Zeng, obviously there has been a big, a big stimulus uh, in China, and that's obviously had, had a big impact on kind of construction equipment sales. Um, kind of in the past when there's been a big, a big stimulus, you know, there has been, you know, a fairly kind of sharp decline that's followed. Is that something that you think might happen or has that been kind of managed in perhaps a slightly kind of different way this time? So for China, I think the uh, stimulus uh, was over at the end of last year. So from this year, we already started the new five years uh, plan for the country and for all the industries. So the, the, from the investments, for infrastructure, some other activities. So there's a lot of, uh, for example, as for uh, agriculture and the, the uh, environment protections, the countryside, the uh, uh, urbanization, all these activities will be next five years, even for 10 or 20 years. So this is a very long pro project. And the, the, our industry will, will be benefited from all these investments and the, the development of the countries. So from outside China, I believe some of the countries the, will be a very good market for this year and the next year, but some of the market, it depends that you know, the country, they have uh, enough, the finance means to, to stimulate the, 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 the industry. So this is, uh, depends the different country, I think they have different policy that will cause different uh, situation for our industry. Okay, great. Thank you. And um, obviously, the, so our kind of our broad title for this kind of chat is kind of OEM opportunities. Um, kind of, I wonder, Pekka, if you could kind of tell me, are, are there any kind of particular geographical kind of markets or kind of regions that you kind of guys are looking to where you see, you know, a strong potential for growth in the future? Yeah, for, for us, um, um, the main markets of, uh, of construction equipment to uh, uh, are truly in in the northern hemisphere hemisphere and the main markets really for us are North America Europe Europe China and India uh, India and uh, three out of these markets are are in very active and, and strong shape at this moment and uh, and for unfortunate reasons the Indian market is uh, is, uh, is is very quiet at this moment uh, this moment but um, I'm sure that also India will will start the recovery 
once the once the COVID sort of uh, uh, eases eases off. But uh, but uh, we we see that uh, um, that these areas will continue to be be the strongest strongest areas uh, areas, and and that is of course of course where we are we are focusing with uh, with many of our actions and activities. Okay, and then a similar question to you, please, if I may. Um, Chairman Zhang, in terms of, you know, Liglong being such a kind of a truly kind of global uh, company, I kind of wonder if there's any kind of particular markets where you see kind of, you know, real potential for strong growth or maybe just any potential markets that there's going to be, you're going to have a lot more focus on. Yeah, for Portugal, of course, China is the most important market. So outside China, we have several uh, regions. It's, it's quite good for Liglong. The first of the Southeast Asia, I think is one of the uh, the best market for Liu and for the in industries. And then we can see that the, the, the economy is, is very stable and they always keep growing in the last uh, 10 years. And we have very good uh, you know, distributors in that area. And then, so this is very perfect from that, that area. Another region is, is Russia and the CIS uh, areas. And the, uh, our products is uh, fit the market very good. And then we have uh, some good uh, dealers in that areas because you know the the oil and the the the, the, uh, the nature resources the price is going up so we believe there's a lot of uh, investments in CS areas so we can uh, gain the market share we can have a good business after that I think the Africa is uh, is a uh, uh, good uh, market it's a uh, it's very strong for the big machines mining machines, so we, we gain the market share last year and the, in the future we can benefit. Also, I believe India should be a good market for us after after the company. I think the, the India sphere, I think is one of the, uh, the the best potential market for, for everybody for, for the future. Also, we pay a lot of attention and the and this investments in the North America and the Europe. So we believe we can uh, we can have a good business in, in those two areas. So, so for Lugan, generally, we, we can uh, grow in China and outside China. Even for the last year, we, we are quite good outside China. We, we grew about the 5% for the sales uh, revenue and the, from outside China. So this is, I believe, we have a strong market for, for the near future. Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, and thank you to all of the all of the questions um, which which are coming in. We've got quite a few. Um, just quickly, because you did you did sort of mention India. Then towards the end, um, we have a question that's come in um, from Rahul, who says, "How do you see the Indian construction equipment market growing, um, especially post the impact of the prevailing second wave of COVID nineteen in the country?" So obviously, at the moment, we know that India is going through like a very difficult time, but. Is that something that we kind of say that you know when hopefully they've gone through this we see that as a, as a market with kind of vast potential and sorry that's that's to um to either of you to whoever wants to answer it yes certainly certainly that is the case case with india they have ambitious programs uh, programs um, uh, but of course um, um, at times the programs have been put on hold uh, and that's uh, that's very typical of india Indian market market behavior and uh, and at times uh, they pushing the pedal all the way down and uh, and, and speeding up again and and uh, and they they measuring road construction so and so many kilometers per day and uh, per day and uh, and that's a public public number that they do publish and uh, and I think once uh, everything gets fully fully going they will be completing say 40 40 kilometers or something like that of, of highway per day currently they are uh, below half of that one. That one, that one. So there is room to go, and that's only road, road highway construction part. Great, thank you. So, as I've said, with our kind of our broad title of kind of OEM opportunities, it kind of it seems to me that new technology is kind of perhaps kind of one of these kind of perhaps one of the biggest um, opportunities for kind of OEMs. Um, Mr. Zeng, if I can go over to you, please, and just kind of, kind of maybe. Um, ask you to talk about Lu Gong's approach to kind of new technology and kind of maybe touch on you know how big an opportunity you think this is for the industry. Yeah, for for Lu Gong and, and actually in China, the the new technology is getting popular. Uh, 
most of the, the, the big companies uh, the invest for the R&D, for the new facilities, and the, this is very, very good for, for the industry. For the open, we start, uh, we start uh, the, you know, the, the battery equipments uh, from uh, five years ago, and the, in two, uh, 2019, we, we launched the two models. One is the wheel loader, that's a five ton wheel loader. Another one is the 22 ton uh, egg readers in China. And the, after one year uh, testing in the field, and the, we collect a lot of uh, feedback from, uh, from the customers. And the, now we, for this year, we have launched the second version for the battery uh, vehicles. And also we have a plan to, for, for the other products, for the rollers, dozers, and also we just launched, uh, in this month, we launched a new a battery uh, mining truck. So for Ryukun, we have a, uh, a plan for, for, for next few, few years, and we have uh, invest, we established the, the, the R&D center for the battery. Another area is, uh, I think, is the intelligent machines. For in China, the people not only talk about intelligent machines, actually we we invest for this kind of uh, technology. And also last year we, we launched, uh, we called uh, the remote control machines, the wheel loaders in the market. This, this kind of special mach uh, machines is for the, you know, the, the high risk uh, applications. And we, we think this is uh, uh, the, the one step for the huge for the for auto autonomous machines in China, the, the people have a lot of passion for, for, for this kind of new technology. The third area is the big data. So we collect a lot of data from our machines. Today we have, you know, monitoring, monitoring the, about the 200,000 equipment in the field. So every, uh, the, the, the back, every machine should be monitoring about 100 parameters, for example, the, the wheel loaders, uh, x readers we can, uh, we can get all the data uh, in every five minutes from the machines. So this provides a lot of uh, data for us to analysis for, you know, for the customer support, for the quality uh, prevention, and also for some uh, other, other uses. For example, we can, uh, we can analysis the, the operators' habits and we can uh, change the operators how they improve their, their oper uh, operation uh, skill mm -hmm. and they, to improve the efficiency and they, to save the fuel uh, consumptions. So this uh, kind of the technology will be getting very popular in, in, in China in the next few years. So this, uh, this is, uh, of course, there's some other uh, new technology where, where investments, we, we call the uh, IoT, the internet of uh, the, 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 we put all the machines collect as, a, as one, you know, in one unit. So last year we have, uh, we started the mining, uh, a quarry, uh, we, there's about uh, 100 machines. So we connect all the machines and we, we have, uh, you know, the website, then we uh, get all the data, analysis, how the, the machines, the working, the operators, how we improve the, the, the whole uh, quarries efficiency and the safety and the, the, the maintenance of the machines. So this, this kind of the technology should be getting popular in China, I think in the next few years, yeah. Okay, thank you. A fantastic answer though, um, with lots of like, there's so many different aspects of technology on there, which, you know, which all have kind of, a big, a big potential. I wonder if you could give us your kind of view on it as well, Pekka? Yeah, very much we see similar things happening, happening also, also uh, elsewhere, but, uh, but, but clearly China is, uh, is very advanced uh, already today, like Chairman Cheng, Cheng introduced us. We are, by the way, partners in, in China. China, we do have a uh, Liu, Gong, Liu, Gong, Liu Gong Metro joint venture there. Uh, they're manufacturing um, uh, mobile crossing plants crossing plants and uh, and therefore we are are of course following very closely what, what Liu Kong is, is is doing and 
similar things we are doing outside the uh, out, outside China as, as well. I mean, monitoring of the equipment, knowing knowing the status of equipment. Equipment, for example, when the COVID did hit us, we were able to able to monitor the utilization of, of our our uh, um, equipment fleet globally and. Uh, and we, we clearly saw, saw, saw sort of a recovery of our business and utilization rate of, uh, of, uh, of our equipment uh, during the first months of the, of the, of the COVID. So, so there are some practical examples of it, of it as, um, as, as well. Uh, for us, uh, the, um, the battery operated equipment is, is not that major issue because our equipment is mostly uh, fixed installations, even though we have mobile crushers, but but the uh, moving moving the equipment is with the diesel engine, and, and that diesel engine for for just moving is 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 used very little. But name of the game is is elect electrification of, of equipment, and uh, then of course uh, the issue becomes that how to how to supply electricity, uh, especially to the job sites, construction sites. Uh, the quarry environment is easier because it is it is more of a fixed installation there and and there we already have mostly electric equipment but uh, but in in construction shop sites uh, where diesel equipment is, is more extensively used used there really the power supply needs to needs to develop uh, to a more sustainable sustainable way of, of doing maybe fuel cells will 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 be the answer at, at one point and uh, and uh, uh, be, be really the flexible flexible ways then to, to provide the power to the to the job site, but the equipment needs to be provided. So that's uh, that's where we, we we go with this one. And then then of course uh, there's uh, there's health and safety aspect always always in the, in the equipment um, uh, construction equipment and uh, and um, just to give you examples that how how different they can be. We can talk about intelligent machines and uh, and we can talk about um, unmanned operation and, and things like that, but still we see people people with interfacing with the machines. And I'll take an example of, of what we've done uh, done over the past couple of years. We uh, launched uh, uh, for dump trucks a, a rubber uh, dump box uh, of different sizes. We, we've sold them for mining applications. We sold them for uh, construction applications. And uh, this sounds very simple, simple um, solution, that one, but what it does is um, it sort of uh, gives the opportunity to, to, to have 10% higher, higher payload on a truck. And uh, if payload is higher, yet the total weight is the same, and it means that the fuel consumption is the same, so fuel consumption per ton or per cubic meter uh, is 10% lower, and that's sustainability. Um, it also means that uh, there's less noise when loading the truck. There's, there's, there's very little noise when, when the sort of bucket of uh, bucket of rock or material drops drops from an excavator excavator bucket uh, on on the box and less vibration to the operator. Mm -hmm. So these things do matter do matter and uh, and I'm sure that we'll see interesting developments around this one. Okay, great. Um, so I've just got a quick follow-up question, really, which is obviously both of you kind of talked about electrification and, and kind of battery technology. Um, I kind of wonder how much um, of the push for that is kind of coming from the customers themselves, or how much would it potentially be coming from kind of government and kind of regulations, or is it a, a combination of those two factors? I, th I think... Uh, um... Uh, certainly, everyone is aware of it. Governments are pushing. Regulations will be tighter and tighter. So that is that is that is one side. Uh, one side. Companies, of course, take actions. They they prepare for this one. OEMs, I can see every, everyone doing and taking steps on that one. But where the where the real pull for that one, it will it will come from consumers. That's how I see and and feel. And uh, it's affecting all areas of of life and. And we we can see it already already today that uh, that uh, any consumer product, uh, one, how it's made and and what it's made of, is is very much of interest to the consumers, and that's where the, really the, the the market force will be. It's the pull, and that's where we see the first applications for, call them green steel, call them whatever green, 
So, so that's that's where it is, and that's why car industry is preparing for that one. There's their consumer goods, goods, and uh, and um, and that again is an is an opportunity for for construction. It's it's an opportunity for mining, mining to produce uh, uh, metals and, and materials in in a clean way, clean way, and um, this this will be a really huge transformation that we we all need to go through. Okay, great. And then I've got a, a question here. Again, thank you very much, everyone who's, who's asking their questions. We've, we've, we've got a good number in. I will try to get them if I can. Um, it's from Julie Ebers, and that's it's it's for you, um, Mr. Cheng, and it's um, it kind of ties into technology, really, of, of what we've just been talking about. It's saying, is the skill shortage that we're seeing in Europe and North America also a problem in China, and, and is this something that technology can um, can help the industry with? So, so for, for China, I think the, the, for the new technology, we, uh, the, 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 uh, normally the, the, fact, the, the company, they invest for, for, for the new technology and the, uh, for the battery uh, machines, I think for China, we have a, a very strong supply chain, so we don't have any, any problem for that. For example, we, we, we have the, the wheel and the exodus. And we have uh, lots of uh, suppliers for the battery and also the charging systems. So we don't have a uh, big trouble for, for, for China. But uh, for outside China, I think there's some of uh, the difference uh, uh, between the, the, the lawyers or regulations. For example, the China and the US and the Europe, they are very different. So for outside China, we need to start the, the regulations and the laws, the local laws, how we meet the requirements of the, the local market for, for that. Uh, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, we've got another um, question that, that's come in, which is something that I wanted to, um, I was wanted to touch on uh, with you both later on, um, if possible, which was to kind of, to kind of, you mentioned kind of supply chains there, but whether we kind of think kind of going forward into kind of 2022 or kind of beyond the, maybe one of the things that might slow down um, you know, sales is not that the demand won't be there, but there might be supply chain um, issues. Um, Pekka, is that something that you'd like to um, just briefly answer, please? Yeah, probably too early to say anything about uh, 22. Uh, we are, of course, currently um, seeing some of the shortages, uh, shortages in, uh, in, in supply chain longer than definitely. And uh, shortage of some of the some of the components. So far, the impact hasn't been too 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 big in in the business uh, in in our case. But uh, but of course, when I when I listen, what's happening in 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 sort of uh, some other areas, of course, uh, the concern is is there. But uh, um, at the same time, I don't think uh, the, the global production volumes are are have 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 grown so great that we wouldn't have the capacity. This is a more of a, a short-term uh, supply shock that's in in the system, and and it's it's because uh, uh, the supply chains were sort of uh, taken so 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 much down uh, during the worst times of of COVID, COVID, and and uh, against the outlook that was so pessimistic in the beginning of the mm. of the COVID of crisis. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so if we could just sort of touch on, we're sort of talking about obviously kind of real kind of big kind of mega trends here. Um, but if we could talk about kind of sustainability, which I know we've already touched on a little bit. Um, and kind of um, Chairman Chang, I wonder if, if, if you could ask, um, sorry, if you could answer whether is sustainability, you know, something that Chinese companies are increasingly working towards. And maybe you could speak a little bit about Lugong's approach to this. Yeah, for for the uh, for the environment protections, the governments they put a lot of effort and lots of investment for that. Also, they ask very strictly to to the commerce, to the, to not only for the factory operation, also for the machines. So for Lugo, we have a very actually big plan to how to we get the new green machines for for that. For example, the, 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 the battery machines is one of the huge project for, for, for us for the next five years. Hopefully, in, uh, I think in five years, the, the in China, the, the battery machine will reach 
10 to 15 percent of the total volume, and that's a huge number. So this is uh, the one area with that. And the secondly, we 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 have uh, lots of uh, you know research, R and D research for the for the new materials, and also it's important for next year the China we are launched the we have started the the tier four uh, emission uh, engine. So this is also more areas we, we do that. So for 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 Liu Kong and the Chinese companies, we are really think it's very important how we how we uh, control the emission of machines, how we, uh, how we investment for the protection, uh, environment protection for, for that. So this is for sure important, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and Packer, I mean, we've already touched a bit on obviously um, electrifying kind of products and, and kind of how kind of important that is. Um, I'm just sort of curious as well in terms of kind of there's so much kind of technology around at the moment. I mean, is what you're looking for in your, you know, R&D teams, you know, a lot different from kind of what it used to be in the past? Or is that is the kind of, you know, the skill set of, of, of the kind of person that OEMs are going after kind of changed and moved on from what it might have been 15 or 20 years ago? Yeah. Um, um, I think after all the, the skill sets, of course, they need to develop with the, with, with the, with the, with the technology as, a, as a such, but... Uh, uh, but um, um, when it relates to, to sustainability, it's just, a, a, just another area that we need to pay attention to. We need to educate ourselves, train our people, people, people for that one, and really to understand uh, what, the, what the true requirements and how we can make an impact, impact on, on, on us. Uh, we've already concluded that as, as part of our sustainability program, which really starts from the, the commitment to 1.5 degree, a max global warming and uh, and uh, and then science-based targets which we have established um, ourselves. But uh, but as a part of that one, we said that we have set now sustainability targets to to every R and D project. That we Sometimes it's the main main objective is to is to have a step change in, in sustainability. Sometimes it's one of the objectives. But uh, this applies to, to R&D, but it applies to all development actions that we take in a company as, as well. as well. And, uh, and um, it applies how we run our factories. It, um, it applies how we arrange our logistics. So this is, uh, this is really sort of, we, we, we need to take all areas into, into account. Into account. And, and yes, so we've taken, taken steps. We've gone into, gone into uh, uh, um, uh, use of renewable energy already, which did cut our CO2 by 60%. And um, there are actions like, like this, like, like this that we do. The logistics changes that we made will, will cut our logistics CO2 emissions by 30%. So these, these are major, major steps. And, and then, of course, we want to pay a lot of emphasis on, on what, what can we achieve together with customers through our R&D and, and cooperation with customers to, to reduce their emissions. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and just while um, while I've got you, and I know that you said that there was, um, I know that Lugong and Metso do kind of work together. So I don't know if this is one that you wanna um, answer just by yourself, Pekka, or, or if Chairman Zeng wants to come in, but we've had a question um, from Alex uh, Zhang who says China is a huge potential market. What's Metso Autotech's new strategy in China? Yeah, uh, uh, we of course uh, we have uh, several uh, businesses that we that we that we have in 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 China. We have um, naturally the Liu Kong Metso joint venture for 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 mobile local tracks, uh, uh, local local tracks um, uh, joint venture just completed. Uh, completed a new factory factory it was opened a few days ago congratulations chairman cheng for that one that one and uh, and thanks thanks to your your efforts and and uh, and uh, and uh, your organization for for bringing it up uh, up uh, we have in in southern china chairman cheng mentioned that uh, um, southern china is, is really active active part of the of the most active part of the of the china we have uh, our local brand Shaorui uh, crushing plant um, factory there. Uh, it was a joint venture company earlier. We we own it now fully, 
and uh, that has grown very rapidly and, and successfully to to a, a very good good business and we are also exporting exporting from china uh, Sharui equipment we have uh, a crusher plant uh, in um, in in Tianjin where we manufacture metro metro crushers. These are the unit crushers, not the mobile plants, but the crushers that are are inside the the, the, the mobile crushers, for example, or can be fixed installed in the, in the quarries or or mines. Uh, and mines. So so these are these are primarily what we have in uh, have, have in China. And then of course we do have uh, for consumables for wear parts. We do have. Uh, our uh, foundry in uh, in China as well, and and then of course other suppliers and, and supply chain there. So, so uh, we see very much uh, China as a prosperous market into the future. China is investing in infrastructure and other areas of construction, and uh, and uh, we we definitely want to be be part of it. Yeah. So for you, we have uh, a long history for the joint ventures. Uh, we established joint venture with uh, ZF Group for the driving license 1995. It has been very successful for the powertrain system. And also 10 years ago, we, we established the joint venture with Meizu and another joint venture with Cummins for the engine. So both of them, they are very successful. So I believe in, few, in China and outside China, we can have a good uh, cooperation and we, we should have a a much bigger business uh, uh, for the future. I think we, we can uh, join together and have a, a bright future for, for our products and our customers. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Oh, we've got another question that's come in um, from John D, which I think is an interesting question, uh, but might be, um, I don't know, a difficult one to answer, but um, we can see. He says, I'm sorry to come back to COVID, but do the panel think that the different um, the vaccination rates across countries will create unique opportunities as some countries will be able to open up sooner than others. Um, so an interesting question, but perhaps not an easy one to answer. I don't know, Pekka, if you'd like to try that one first. Yeah, it is a difficult difficult one to, to see, see, but uh, um, we, we see it any, anyways exactly the same way that it, it, there won't be one single single exit day for from from COVID, uh, COVID, it, it will be phased uh, uh, exit. Uh, it will take country by country, and um, and of course, yes, uh, some of the companies uh, might be better off if their markets open up, open up faster, and uh, and uh, and of course uh, they will strengthen from the COVID, uh, COVID issues and uh, and recover from the COVID issues faster, and and maybe that can create some. Some, but uh, but uh, I haven't thought thought about from this angle angle before. But uh, but certainly, it's uh, recovery is not taking place at the same pace, and it, it places companies a little bit in different different positions. The ones who are who are operating internationally will, of course, be able to able to to benefit from from all opening markets. Okay, great, thank you, and. Um... We've got another question sort of that has has come in and i think this is this is interesting as well um and again it's to both of you and it says kind of do you see kind of different products so combustion again you know versus say electrical hybrid being developed and manufactured at the same time serving uh, different markets around the world that's, yeah, please, that's um, please 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 jump <laughs> Go ahead. So I believe uh, some of the new technology, for example, be the, uh, the battery machines will be started from some countries. For example, in China, they come and support this, and the, 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 the customers they really want to try the, the new technology. And they, so this, I think, should be uh, very good for, for our industries. For some other countries, I think it's dealing with the, the infrastructures. For example, your charging system, you have to have the, the high efficient charging system, otherwise you cannot have battery machines. And also the, the government should have a law to support this. And then we need some uh, new laws and new standards so to, to build the environments for the new technology for, for that. So I believe in the future, in the next five years, 
most of the countries from Europe into North America, China, maybe some of the other countries, we will start all this, we will support this kind of the new technology for, for them. That's a good opportunities for, for our industry. Great, thank you. And Pekka, would you like to add anything to that? No, I think uh, that, that covers covers pretty nicely. Pretty nicely also my, my viewpoint. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, I mean, we kind of talked to, we kind of quite a broad range of kind of topics that, that we've spoken about today. I mean, it really does seem like kind of going back to that, that kind of headline theme of OEM opportunities that, you know, um, electrification and kind of batteries and kind of new new technology kind of really do provide you know those those massive opportunities and i suppose my kind of final question which is kind of more of a kind of a, a broad one which is kind of do you think that we've already seen as an industry quite a big productivity and efficiency uptake thanks to these new new technologies and kind of where might that be able to take us in the future yeah, uh, I think um, all businesses, all industries have have spoken and discussed about the digitalization, but but the real applications for for that one uh, in global market needs to needs to take place. Uh, uh, so so I'm sure that there is uh, through big data, machine learning, AI, these uh, these these are various. Uh, applications uh, there's there's lots of room to 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 improve uh, productivity and efficiency uh, still and and then naturally development of other related technologies uh, technologies and and um, we also have to start to see also sustainability as a as a part of our productivity that what can we produce with with lower emissions and it, it needs to become a one of the productivity measure that is clearly an area that where, 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 where we will invest our, our, our monies into future. Great. Have you got anything that you'd like to add to that, Chairman? Uh, I agree, Mr. Pecos, that uh, opinions, but in China, I think the, maybe the, the, the industry move a little bit fast for that. Because you know the, the Chinese customers they like the new 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 technology and the new equipment. And especially you know in China the the the, the labels, the, the numbers of labels is is uh, declined since uh, now maybe next five five years. So the people we we need the the, the autonomous machine or one operator they can uh, operate maybe seven machines. So this kind of demand is already there. Come from comes from uh, from big companies, from the contractors, from the you know the some other the mining uh, the owners. So this is, I think, is is good for us because uh, the comes the customer driving our industry to move fast for that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. I, I do fully agree, by the way, that you know, that China is moving faster than than the rest of the world in, in this regard. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. So we, we said that we were going to be um, 45 minutes. We've, we've, we've been 50 minutes. Um, I appreciate um, both of you are extremely busy men and I really do appreciate um, your time. So, um, Pekka, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And um, Chairman Chang, thank you so much for your time. I do, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Andy, please see regards to Mr. King, <laughs> James King. <laughs> okay. will do. I, will, I will pass on my regards. Hopefully he's been watching. Um, okay. Yes, I will pass on my regards. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank um, you. So yes, so that was, um, that was our webinar, OEM Opportunities. Thank you again to everybody who registered and for watching. Uh, just remains for me to, to thank our sponsors again. That's Nylacast, Topcon and Terex Trucks. Um, this webinar has been recorded, so please do keep an eye on www.khl.com as we will upload it in the next couple of days. Um, so yes, once again to my panel, thank you very much and thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.